everyone. So I presented for Maxon earlier this week, and one of the things I covered in my presentation was how to create kelp using hair in Cinema 4D with no plugins. This is how I created the kelp originally using X particles. If you missed my presentation, you can click the link in the description to check it out. Just a heads up that this is actually an older recording that I had done for my Patreon page. I decided recently to shut that down and move to YouTube. So the audio quality in this is not as good as this is right now as I'm speaking. So I'm sorry, just bear with me. I didn't want to re-record all of this audio. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to show you the finished product. Let me pop out of the camera. I'm going to hide my ocean. I'm going to turn off the cloner. This is actually just one kelp plant here. And if I press play, you can see it do its kelpy undulating underwater thing. All right, let's open up a new project. First things first, we need a plane. And we're going to make this. 30 by 5. Actually, we're going to make this 5 by 30. And we're going to do 1 and 2. All right, let's switch to quick shading with lines. All right, here is our basic shape that we're going to edit. Okay, uh, pressing C, I made it editable. I'm going to go into line mode. I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to scale it down. And select this edge and scale it down, but not quite as much as the other side. Then I'm going to click M, L for my loop cut tool. I'm going to go into point mode. I'm going to grab this point and drag it out. Okay. And now we've got a nice looking leaf, like a basic leaf, kelp leaf shape. All right. Next, I'm going to do a cut there so we don't have uh, the triangles affecting all of the geometry here. So, all right, next, I'm going to go back to my loop path cut tool. I'm holding shift. I'm going to start cutting this up into subdivisions. We want a pretty good amount of cuts in the leaf, so that way it'll bend. No. And this with the knife, because the loop path cut tool doesn't really want to work well with odd geometry like this. It prefers quads. Okay. Here we go. Check out that leaf. All right, the final step of our leaf is we need to go into polygon selection. And we need to grab the last two polygons down here. And then we're going to go to Select, Set Selection. And we're going to save this as pin, is what we're going to call it. All right, let's rename this as leaf. All right. Let's go into object mode. And let's just turn off the lines. All right. So we've got a nice little leaf here. Next step, we're going to get a cloner. I'm going to throw that leaf into a cloner. And we're going to take the cloner and turn it to radial. And we need them to be pointing the other way. So we go in, grab the, um, the axis options, and let's move it to the end. And then let's rotate it, holding shift. Rotate it 180 degrees. Okay, now back in the cloner, let's make this two. 
So now this is our basic leaf structure. Now let's throw in the stem. So we'll grab a cylinder. We're going to make the radius two, maybe one. Yeah, one it is. All right, we're going to move this up some. Let's make it taller. We want a nice, tall, giant kelp. Now we're going to take this cloner and put it inside of another cloner. For this cloner, we're going to do linear. And we are going to make the separations about five. Yeah, five. And let's go with a nice even 60. Bump that up a bit. Now we've got this really organized, boring, pointy thing. Okay, let's add some randomness to this. I'll make it look more natural. All right, MoGraph effector random. Now we don't want the position. We just want rotation. Let's do that a bit. So it looks more interesting Look from a better angle. That's looking so much better, right? Right. Okay, let's group all of this. Alt G to group, and we're going to name this Kelp. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, let's duplicate it. and hide the original. I always like to duplicate and hide before I make things editable. So that way in case you have to go back, it's very easy to do. I think it's a good practice. So that is my recommendation. All right, we're gonna select this cloner and we're gonna go to current state to object. And we'll delete it. And then we've got all those leaves. Okay, next one, current state to object. Delete it. Now all the leaves are editable. Let's select children. Connect objects plus delete. Now they're all there. Now I'm going to show you something cool. Remember that selection we made? They're all still selected. And this is really important, as you'll see in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of the random effector. We don't need that anymore, and it's still in this folder too. Cylinder, we'll go ahead and make that editable, and we'll call you stem. With the leaves selected, let's go back into object mode. With the leaves selected, go to X particles, dynamics object, XP cloth FX, create cloth. Then click on the little shirt icon here, which is the X particle cloth tag. Hit pen and drop that selection we made in there. Now, press play. Yeah, you can see they're all dropping. Now, how X particle cloth works is it actually makes a particle for every polygon. So if I go to display, let's make them spheres and let's make them pink. Now let's make them green, green for kelp. All right, press play. And you can see all of those, all of those particles all over all the leaves. Press pause. Let's go back. Now for faster playback, I'm going to go ahead and in the constraints, I'm going to get rid of the collision. I'm also gonna get rid of the gravity. We don't need the gravity. And for organizational sake, I always like to make a system. So we don't need this other emitter. So we'll drag this emitter in. We'll drag the constraints over here. Same with that. 
stem and leaves, I like to put them in the other objects. All right, we can delete that. Okay. Now what we do need in the modifiers, we need a motion modifier. And what we want is a wind modifier. Let's grab the wind, let's rotate it. So it's pointing straight up, so just 90 degrees, holding down shift so it snaps. Now we want the scale of the turbulence to be smaller. We want turbulence to be happening. We also want the wind strength to not be too high. And let's press play and see what this looks like. Now you see they're all going up. It's a nice bit of turbulence, so they're moving in interesting ways. They're not colliding, so they look a little funky, but this is definitely what we're looking for. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to change this to 24 hours, or 24 frames, not hours, frames. 24 frames per second, that's typically what I like to work in, unless I'm doing some super slow motion stuff. Let's go ahead and make it 200 frames long so we can get a good look at this. Other objects we are also gonna need is a cache. I always like to do external files. So we've got our cache object. Now before we cache, we need to go to constraints. Turn on collision. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the stem, right click, X particle tags, X particle collider, because we don't want these leaves going through the stem. That's not how the world works. So we need to stop that from happening. And let's build the cache. All right, so that took about three minutes. Let's press play. And look, look at that kelp doing its kelpy thing. Let's go ahead and just hide the emitter just so we can see the leaves doing it. Yeah, look at that. And they're colliding and undulating. Nice. Now to get this to work with a cloner, we need to export it as an Alembic. So you go to File, Export, Alembic. And we, the end frame is 200, start frame is 0, scale of 1, particles, particles geometry, that's okay. All this kelp new, and we're exporting. So, we finished exporting. Let's go ahead and do file, open project, help, new. Frame rate is 24. Press play, and look at it go. Yeah, we don't need that kelp. It exported everything. There's our nice animated kelp. Moving around. Let's grab a cloner. Let's throw it in a cloner. And let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's up them. Let's add a random effector, my favorite effector. And we don't want to move them in the Y. Everything else is fine. Let's scale some of them taller than the others. And let's affect rotation, of course. All right. Now, back to the cloner. Let's scooch them in more. We want a nice, dense little field here. All right, let's go ahead and I'll set this up like I did with Octane. Let's grab the Live Viewer window. I'll throw it over here. Scooch this in. And let's go ahead and set this up as a story. Yeah. So, 1080 
19, 20, 24. All right. Well, let's objects. Let's grab a camera. a bit close. Let's move them back a little bit. Just want to add some depth. Okay. Now let's set the scene. Let's go ahead and let you see what that's looking like composition wise. Not bad. Got a little bit more rotation. Let's also move this camera up a bit. So I want to see some of the reflections of the water above, like how I had in my render. Okay. Now let's go ahead and set up the environment. So, for me, the easiest way to set up an environment that looks underwater with Octane. You, first things first, I use just a regular gradient, not the octane gradient. I turn it to a 2D vertical. And we'll make this kind of a dark tealy blue color. Top, let's go for a brighter tealy color. It's looking very tropical. Let's also throw a glossy material onto our kelp. And let's throw out a gradient with the gradient and the diffuse. Let's also grab a random color node. And throw in some brighter green, darker green, mix of greens. All right. Now and roughness. Let's add some roughness to it. All right, let's go back into the environment. We're gonna add some fog. Let's do the radius at five. I'm gonna copy shader, no. Copy shader, paste shader. Make the absorption darker blue color. We're gonna make the scattering A lighter, tealy, turquoisey color. All right, we're going to up the density. Okay, let's see options. Check camera, turn that off. So I'm going to hop out of the camera so I can see what I'm doing better. Let's grab another plane. We're going to bring it up above the kelp. I just want it to be seen. 
pull that out that way and out this way. Oh, not that far. It doesn't need to be that, that big. All right. Now let's throw a displacer out there. Throw that underneath the plane. Let's also make a specular material and throw that on the plane. All right, and the displacer settings, uh, we're gonna add noise and we're gonna make the animation speed one. Oh wait, animation speed, there it is, one. And let's make, well, first need to make this bunch have a lot more of those back into the displacer. Let's turn the global scale of the noise up. That's looking pretty good so far. Let's also throw a subdivision surface on there to smooth everything out. Great. Now, the specular material, we're going to want it to be a scattering medium. And we're also going to want to turn on fake shadows in the common. That's going to allow light to shine through this. And the scattering medium, we, the absorption, go to plugin, set up 4D, RGB spectrum. All right. The absorption, darker blue color, a copy shader. Paste shader. Hello, paste shader. There we go. And this will make you brighter. Okay. Now, yeah, it's just playing with the levels to get it right. Maybe it should make you brighter. Yeah. Maybe more into the cyan. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Lights. Area light. Let's bring this up. Let's rotate it. Yeah, we've got some nice volumetrics going on back there. Looks real nice. Let's make this a little bit tighter. And... Plugins. RGB spectrum again. And we're going to skew this slightly into the orangey yellowness. And that looks really nice, doesn't it? Let's see how it looks with path tracing. Let's turn that down and hop back into the camera. and just do a selection render so we can really see the detail that's happening in here. That is very pretty. Well, that sums up this tutorial. If you have any questions about it, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!